Welcome to the MCA. I'm Angelina, an apprentice for MCA's Teen Creative Agency, and I'll be your host today. I am a young black woman wearing a blue sweater and a plaid skirt, and I'm standing in front of Celia Alvarez Munoz's piece, Ave Maria Promissima, Enlightenment 8. In this episode, we'll talk about Celia Alvarez Munoz's piece, Ave Maria Promissima, Enlightenment 8. Celia Alvarez Munoz was born in El Paso, Texas, and currently lives and works in Arlington, Texas. The art you'll see in this video is contemporary art. Saying art is contemporary just means that it is made recently in our time. Old historical art is special and important because through it we can learn about the past. But the art of our time is just as important because it can help us see the present and the past in new ways. When I look at this artwork, I feel curious. It makes me think about the artists in their youth and how different it must have been to grow up in a time so different from the present. This leads me to think about ways of conveying my own memories. How would it look if I placed my memories in a time capsule and left them for the world to see? Today, we'll learn more about Celia Alvarez Munoz's piece, Ave Maria Promissima, Enlightenment 8. I had the honor of interviewing Celia to learn more about the intentionality of her piece and gain insights into her work. I have a couple questions about your Enlightenment series, which is here on show at the MCA. It's a beautiful series, by the way. So as the Enlightenment series has spanned over the course of your life, and Enlightenment 8 takes a deeper look into your childhood, how has doing this affected the way you like view your memories? They all come from there. I knew I had hit a good button, you know, when I started the series. they are stories I've told all along, gotten a lot of laughs from, you know, some raised eyebrows. Uh, but in combining them with a the form and the sequential uh, uh, photographs, uh, I took them to another you know, a couple levels up in the conceptual, in a conceptual bent. I knew I had a, a, a nice little Pandora's box mm -hmm. with, with them, yeah. When I was looking at the series, I was like, well, why aren't these self-portraits? Like, since this is the retelling of like your memories. So you, can you talk why, talk a little bit about why you chose the snake and the apple instead of a depictions of your younger self? Oh no, that would be boring. <laughs> <laughs> you don't tell a story the same way, you know? I mean, and then I like playing to an audience and putting myself like in the audience place. I think that had a lot to do with the form uh, as well and the concept. Um, in designing something in the advertising world, you have to think of who's receiving that message. Okay, and how that will, you know, be approached. What's the first thing they look at? What do you want them to look at? You know, mm -hmm. and, in, and in transforming them into objects, you know, forming a, getting, grabbing a concept and, and giving it form, you know, to three-dimensional <laughs> form, then uh, I think you allow lots more to you know, inform your process. As you talk a little bit about 3D and form, I was wondering if you could talk about the importance of the slip box that is included with this series. Okay, good question. Yeah, you kind of wreck your brain. Okay, what is this going <laughs> to look like, you know? And then, uh, and then the, 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 the imagery, the way the mind works, you know, the, the clues that start coming to you, and for that particular piece. Yeah, uh, the idea came from a, uh, a real tchotchke toy that we used to play with that came from Mexico. And since I'm there in the border, you know, I grew up there in the border, of course we have that, that other culture and that other influence to come in. And so, uh, yeah, it was a little wooden box that tricked you into opening it. And when you, you know, um, placed your finger on a sliding 
part, a snake would come up, a wire snake would come up and prick your finger. So, so that's the element of surprise, you know, that could be incorporated. And, and that was, you know, yeah, sure. You know, the last image will be the snake. <laughs> what's more, what's, what's the perfect partner for a snake, if not the apple? So by entitling the series Enlightenment, can you expand how the functions of, you know, this religious context as well as the European 17th century concepts um, play into your work? Precisely. Yep, yep. I think we speak with a forked tongue. When you use religion to justify injustices, okay? Yes, uh-huh. I mean, that opens up a whole a whole world of discussion. Mm -hmm. and, and very deliberately, that's why I, I called them the Enlightenment Series. You know, yes, yes, yes. It gave me an opportunity to explore myself a little bit more. Uh -huh. And in comparison to the beliefs that evolved uh, uh, through, through my life. You mm -hmm. know, I mean... Do you stay there at the place where you were reared? Yeah, you get to question. I mean, kids get to question. I mean, we're not puppets to just intake the information and not digest it or not mm -hmm. transform it or not questioning. So that's what that little series is about. Wow. Thank you. This, this has been a wonderful interview. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're most welcome.